Welcome to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith Maley along with Morgan. Hello everybody. And we're glad to be with you this Saturday. And we are talking about, do I need an architect or a designer? Or maybe I just need a contractor. So we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna start off this segment with a safe tip of the week, right? Yes, the remodeling safe tip of the week. Yeah, so that is, am I, my voice coming out louder than yours? Yes. In your ears? Mine too. Which one is mine? This one right here? No, that one's mine. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> well then turn mine down. There, there you go. go. There we go, that's probably more even. Yeah. And um, so the, the thing we were thinking about is one of the things that we do to make sure that uh, safety is adhered to in relation to the safety of the client and that has to do with the timing of the start of the of the project because in remodeling you're going to get exposed to a lot of elements that you're not normally exposed to such as insulation in the attic or or even weather on the outside whenever you're tying into a building and whether it's insulation uh, attic air you know and sometimes debris that's up in the attics you're opening up your home into and potentially a lot of weather and even critters that want to come in so what we want to do is minimize that exposure even if it's just temperature changes such as your your windows are going to be replaced oh, yeah. and as part of a remodel there's many components that can affect your well-being and even your safety not to mention dust and so forth so we want what we want to do is orchestrate this and so we're talking really here about the safe tip is timing when do we start? Like I've said before, uh, one of the things I've told people is there's only one thing worse than not starting when you want us to, and that is starting when you want us to. <laughs> because everything needs to be orchestrated and everything needs to be ordered, yes. and, and then we can do it the right way. So then they don't have delays in the middle of the project because a shipping delay for a window or something like that, right? Right, or, you know, um, being exposed to you know to, to something longer because the cabinets aren't here mm -hmm. or or a flooring is not there and, and then or you know and of course with most companies you're going to get the typical well you know we're we didn't have enough manpower situation and so that can leave Gosh, you very very vulnerable mm -hmm. and so that's our safe tip of the week start when you can continue and proceed and have everything lined out and orchestrated mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about this subject of do I need an architect? And do I need a designer? And so people don't really know the difference between a designer and an architect. And, or even that and a, and a contractor. Now most people know the difference between an architect and a, and a contractor, that there is a difference. But let's talk about what each of them are and see which one you think you need for your project. First off, an architect is is a licensed architectural designer. Mm -hmm. An architectural designer doesn't always have an, you know, an architectural degree. In fact, most do not. But they do have the same discipline and one is more advanced and has proven their their things, their their trade by having a license. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we know that there are people who are practicing who know architecture really well that still don't have a license. Mm -hmm. And, and you know that's that's possible it's not like being a doctor where you have to have a license to be a doctor because someone's life is involved uh, although lives can be involved in architecture if it's not done correctly um, one of the qualifications you'd probably want would be to have a, a master's degree in architecture now we happen to have in gay and builders we happen to have an architect Mar Mario Carrasco who has a license and we have one who has a master's degree in architecture also. And um, who's that? David. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that is that's very important that, that you know you have people who just don't have some experience in architecture. But let's talk about the difference. Do you need we're not talking about but when, well let me let me qualify. We're we're an architectural design build firm. Mm -hmm. So of course we have that. And, and I shouldn't use the word of course because not everyone who says that a yeah. design build firm <laughs> actually has architectures, they have designers. Yes. So we're getting complicated here, but there's, there's a whole bunch of varieties 
when it comes to architectures, designers, and design build firms. And of course, your contractor that's neither of those. <laughs> you have that too. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with being any of those, but you just need to know as a consumer, what's the difference and what are you getting? Mm -hmm. First off, I'd say, let's talk about going directly to an architect. Yeah. If you do that, they usually do not have responsibility toward the building of the project, which means that they do not have responsibility toward the price that the project comes out also. So when they go to an architect, are they going to measure and do all of the things of the existing house? Yes what and no. They, do, they, they do the exist. They do the measurements of the home typically, mm -hmm. and they understand a lot about the home as far as the size the and the architecture. Remember, they're architectural designers, mm -hmm. and the first thing they're usually giving you is an architectural design. That does not necessarily include all of the breakdowns on the electrical, the plumbing, it does not include everything that's existing. So those are called existing conditions mm -hmm. and as built plans. So the plans of your home as they are is not usually standard. Okay. You can get them and you're going to pay significantly more for those types of details. Mm -hmm. And so you want to, first of all, know what you'd be getting if you were hiring an architect and what their plans include. But most people don't ask enough questions to know what they're going to get and what they're not going to get, like you were inferring, Morgan. Yes. And so we find people surprised that whenever they show us plans from an architect, that we tell them we have to charge them more to go and do more, more research on what their home has now, whether it be electrical, plumbing, air conditioning, uh, even foundation heights and uh, grades of the ground if we're going to be building out. We need to know all of that information to be able to tell them what it would take to get it from point A to point B, C, D, E, F, and so forth. So that is what some of the limitations are in some of the contracts that people sign with architects. It's not bad, it's just, it's just what they're offering you. And a lot of times that's all you need just to get a general idea if you're going to like the project. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be cheap to get that. And sometimes you can get that from a designer who is an architectural designer and they can design the concepts for you. So if you want to go to an architect or an architectural designer for concepts, I think that's that's okay. But not intricate, intricate. Well, we'll talk about the, the pros and cons yeah. of going intricate and uh, what, what that involves. But we're going to start getting into the difference, what a design build firm would do. Mm -hmm. And so a designer doesn't have a license typically and the architect does. And so that's one of the big key differences there. So we want to make sure that you know what you're getting and what you're not. And uh, it's just like going to Ford or Bernie. I, I know what I'm getting and boy, did I use it to haul some trailers and what a, what a truck and what great service Ford or Bernie has. It's why I go there and why I recommend you go there and check out the latest in Ford products. Ford products are incredible. Um, I've had Dodge, I've had Ford, and I've, Ford is the way to go. Call them at 920-3023 at or FordBernie.com, and we'll be right back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. Eight and a half minutes. Can you, Can you see this? Hmm? Can you see this? If my microphone is here? What? Can you see this if my microphone is here? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Eric, remember. He's the one that's handling what? The windows? Just the San Antonio division. Mm -hmm. and is that his number now? Yeah. Okay. We're going to start off with that? Yes. You're going to say we're live on Instagram and Facebook? Um, no, no we can't. because we're not. We can't, yeah. yeah. You could say check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Welcome to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith along with Morgan. Hello everybody. And so we're glad to be with you this Saturday and... And I also wanted to mention to make sure you check us out where got, you can see our video right now on Instagram and Facebook so you can see our smiling faces at you. That's right. <laughs> And, and, and of course, lots of other things on Instagram and Facebook, as oh, well yeah, as definitely. YouTube. 
We've got about a hundred videos, uh, blogs, which are series on YouTube also. Mm -hmm. Of our different remodeling projects and all of the, um, all of our, like from start to finish yeah. of our remodeling projects. Lots of so series. A lot of different series. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. I want to mention uh, my friends at, at Expel of San Antonio. That's X P E L. <laughs> And, uh, and Eric over there is running their window tinting division, and you really ought to contact him about specific protection he can give you from heat, from UV, and even from burglary, break-ins. Mm -hmm. Call him at 430-7712. That's Eric at ExpelSanAntonio.com. X-P-E-L. X-P-E-L. Yeah, right? it's just like X P E L. XPEL.com <laughs> and then you just you search say. for San Antonio, yeah. not expelled in at sanantonio.com. <laughs> 430 7712. That's easier. Yes. And then I also had a really awesome client testimonial. They sent it to me in an email. Okay. Well, and I hear it. It's from our really, really five time, I think, or more clients. And we went over and took some pictures. And he says, Mr. Mulholland says, Morgan, the pictures are awesome. Thanks to the entire KM crew for helping to put together the beautiful changes in our home. Well, so they're awesome. really happy with it yeah, all. We love the Mulholland stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they have a beautiful renovated home. Oh, yes. It's a great sterling example. Those pictures coming up soon on the website? They're already out. They're already out. Yes. Great. Go to Mulholland. Uh huh. And you can see them on latest projects or in Whole House. All over the website, basically. Yeah, They've got one in every project, category. Every category. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're very, very awesome people. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about the differences between architecture, uh, going to an architect, a designer, and a design build firm. Again, we want to emphasize that not all design build firms have in house architecture. And uh, some of them just use what they call as a designer which doesn't have a degree in architecture or doesn't have a degree in, uh, in interior design. Some of them do uh, interior design and they, they are design build firms. But interior design and architecture are obviously two different disciplines. Mm -hmm. And you might be able to get by with an interior designer on kitchens and baths, but probably not for room additions and larger remodels. So we have both. We need the interior design and we have people with interior design degrees as well as architecture degrees and that way we have both and of course we have the build experience also and that's one of the things i wanted to point out is that it's a real advantage and of course i'm from the build trades i've, I've come from the building side of it uh, and i'm not saying that just because of that anyone who has ever worked with an architect and a builder knows that there's a difference in the way they think mm -hmm. One person is doing the work, one person is writing up and drawing the work and inventing the work and creating it, and both are so necessary. But there are a lot of advantages when you can get those two minds to meet before the project starts, not in the middle of a project. Yeah. And so we foresee and prevent so many issues by being both. And remember, both of these parties are working in the office together. They can feed on each other with all this building experience and all of this architecture experience and all of this interior design experience and the cabinet design experience. And one, just one thing can change all of the above. Oh yeah, I from, I sit with them all. You get to see here, and you get I to see it from the view. The, the different things that the different trades catch or notice that, um, well, you can't do this because of this. Oh, okay, well, the interior designer didn't know that. The architecture designer, you know, caught it. Or Mr. Bob will have caught something. Or mm -hmm. Bonnie. And without all of it, I don't know how you could do a remodel. Yeah. Because the codes that each person is really skilled at um, are all different. You know, all the, the history that they have as well is just, you need all of it. It really, it really makes for uh, the ability to do a much greater variety of projects. Mm -hmm. There's two things you can say. You can do projects really well on a limited scope if you don't have all these people. Yeah. You might be able to do them well, but you wouldn't be able to do a lot of different kinds. Mm -hmm. Only what you can do with your experience as it a designer. It would probably take a lot longer, too, because of the amount of research. 
right. every time. Well, they just stay in a niche. Yeah, that's true. And very, <laughs> and very few can broaden out and do a lot like we can, such a wide variety. And those who do end up having a tremendous amount of mistakes because they don't have all those people in-house. Mm -hmm. But to do it all and to do it well and to have it really, really well thought out before it starts is very rare in this business because it takes so much to do it. Very few people are willing to invest in a 40 person yeah, staff. People. You know, we have 20 of those in house. In yeah. the, I mean, in the office. Yeah. 20 of us in management and in design and, say, and uh, architecture, interior design, and cabinet design. Mm -hmm. At least 20. For, 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 you know, and then purchasing and all that goes into those details, scheduling. That's a lot of folks that are, that are really organizing, designing, and implementing these projects. Organizing and, your project. Yeah, your project. That's so how much it takes. It takes a lot. Now, people mm -hmm. can do it on a shoestring budget, but the results are going to show problems and errors during construction. And it's either going to cost the builder money or it's going to cost you money and that is typically what we see it ends up costing you money mm -hmm. and and time and the time you'll never they're never going to pay you for that no. but time spent up front is time saved later during the more difficult part of the project and so that's what we do and so that is one of the big differences is uh is having a designer and a architectural team having the same mindset and and they never will have it exactly the same but they'll be able to lend and feed off of one another whenever whenever it's done correctly mm -hmm. so we're going to have to go to a break here and just want to mention my friends at, <laughs> at maximum altitude look up joey and uh, joey is doing my lift for me at maximum altitude, we're gonna, you're going to be seeing this soon, and it's been a kind of a lifelong dream of mine to have the ultimate truck, and now I'm going to have it. And I'm going to give you more details later, but right now, go to MaximumAltitude.com. They work for guys like you and me, and he is a winner. I'm telling you, Joey is so cool, and he has been at SEMA. Call him at 655-0184 or MaximumAltitude.com. We'll be right back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. Welcome back to the KM Builder Room Modeling and Design Show. And we are talking about architect, question mark, <laughs> designer, question mark, contractor, question mark. So what do you need is what we're talking about. But I want to talk about something that would make your home a lot more pleasant no matter which way you go and improving it. And that is get that lawn looking healthy, strong, and beautiful. It ain't, by the way, I resist the heat so much better when it's healthy and strong like this, when it has its nutrients. And, and uh, Joe Caccino at BioGreen is, he so uses knowledgeable. the micronutrients is what they use uh -huh. of, of, of um, organic and synthetic blend. So it really does the <laughs> best for both worlds. Gets it quicker and makes it stronger. At 421-9522, they're at BioGreenSA.com or 421-9522. And so we were talking about the differences between those entities, architect, designer, contractor. Now some contractors, most contractors don't have design teams, so don't, don't use designers. They can recommend that you go to a designer, and I hear that all the time from people that I visit. They will recommend that they go see a designer or an architect. And then of course, interior design, the same thing. And then of course, they'll go bid the project afterward. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to get the bids and the designs to be from the same entity, you need a, you need a design build contractor. And some design build contractors call themselves that, or they, some contractors call themselves design build contractors, and they don't have the design in-house. And you can technically still do that. You can still say you are, but it's not really a seamless you can automatically imagine the difference. And so what we do is we have those in, inside design teams. And then again, who, who, um, what are they calling a designer is another question. Oh yeah, that's definitely. I mean, I could call myself a designer. I have taken courses in design and so forth, but I don't mm -hmm. because I don't have a degree in design. So what we call 
is either a license or a degree in design. And that would be true of architecture, that would be true of interior design, the finish outs, mm -hmm. and, the, and then cabinet designs and so forth that go as part of all of that. So we have all three at KM Builders in-house, and we do use cons uh, consultations and consultants for lots of things, and we have engineers outside of that realm that we use on projects, but we have these main entities locked up inside. And, and that's gonna make a big difference when you're going to try to get your price and the design by one entity and not have someone pointing at someone else saying, well, I thought, you know, they would be this much or well, that's his fault or that's their fault. That's the designer's problem. And, and you can really slow down and bog down your progress real easily when you've got people that are not connected. Yeah, just pointing fingers. Yeah. So well, that's one of the big advantages we offer is go with real designers, not just people who call themselves a design build firm. Remember, there's not a, there's not a license to call yourself a design build firm. Mm -hmm. You can use that name if you want to. People can use the name designer if they want to, but that doesn't prove anything. And uh, you can call yourself a contractor real easily. And, uh, and people aren't usually going to question it, but there are things you can do, such as ask if they're degreed if they have a license, and not just a contractor's license, but a license for practicing architecture, yes, or major. interior design, or certifications. What, what are they using to promote their qualifications? What do they use to prove their qualifications? Even on contractors, I mean, um, where, where are they ranked in the city of San Antonio's uh, contractor status ranking? What, what is that program called? Uh, contractor Connect. Contractor Connect, you know, we're in the top tier of the three tiers that are listed with the city of San Antonio. So mm -hmm. you wanna check out contractors very thorough. You wanna con find out what design qualifications they have, not just whether you liked them when they showed up. That's too late, because the personality thing can overcome people's- Good salesmen. Good salesmen, yeah, that's right. They can be so confident. Yep. That, you, that you have no doubts that they could do the project, but you haven't checked out the credentials. Mm -hmm. Remember two things, you must you can trust, but you must verify. Yep. And the second thing is con artist stands for confidence artist. And remember that when Dad you- Dad loves that. Yeah, I, that was just such a neat revelation when I found out that con artist stands for confidence artist. Not construction artist. No, <laughs> or not convict. Yeah. <laughs> not con convict. Convict con. artist is, I guess, what it would be. But a con artist is a confidence artist. So yep. you can't gauge whether or not you think someone is going to be um, a good contractor or do what you want them to do based on how convincing they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, convincing and excitement and, what would you say, confidence is very important. But, yes. but it's not everything that you need know you've really got to do your background check on on these companies uh, what is their reputation how many projects have they done like yours have you talked to their clients have you seen their reviews have you looked at their status in the contractor connect status in San Antonio what licenses do they carry how long have they carried them how many employees do they have not subcontract mm -hmm. employees but in-house employees it might make a difference to you and you'd want to know but you've got to get real specific. In fact, we have an entire show that we'll do soon on how do you choose a contractor. Oh yeah. And uh, we hope you choose a design build firm and we hope it's KM Builders. And just a little bit about us real quick before we leave. I know we don't always talk about it, but we have a 40 person staff with almost 600 years experience and we've been doing it since 1984. I did seven years at USAA and really learned a lot about customer service from USAA. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this is a family owned business with 40 employees with both the talented trades and the design teams in one roof, under one roof in house, as we say. Mm -hmm. And we have a wonderful website. We have been 17 years on the radio with fortunately being able to talk to you listeners about answering your questions about remodeling and giving you good information you can count on. And this is a technical show that deals with specifics. This is not a, a, a handyman show. We've, we've, we've arranged it differently and we've been privileged to be on the air now for almost 17 years. 
And Morgan's been on here for three. Yeah, it's crazy. But Morgan's been around a builder for a long time. <laughs> she's got a lot of experience, even though she's young. She's got a she's got lots of added experience. Of she's even clients, helped. Yeah, some of our clients even remember me when I was little walking the jobs with you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, this is a little girl. Yep. Yeah, toddler in in some cases, and yep. uh, I would take her with me. But she she's been up there roofing with me on the roofs, oh, yeah. two story home Scary. insulation nailing up siding with me and so forth so she's gotten her her feet dirty yeah her hands dirty and her feet wet and so to speak in this business and she's come by it naturally and she loves the business and she loves telling folks about all the things we can do so check us out on our website at kmbuilders.com remember we design the experience so you can experience the design have a great day and weekend <laughs>